Episode 2 of Prince Patel Speaks on Prince Patel TV. Oh, it's true. Oh, it's true. Yeah, so basically, let me introduce the belts. I decided to bring the WBO European one here today. Another one, you've got the minor belt in the WBF minor world title. And then you've got the WBA intercontinental title. And you've got the, um, the rainbow belt, the beautiful... Commonwealth Boxing Council Rainbow Belt held by many greats like Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, and Prince Patel himself. We got gold on top of gold on top of gold. All right, we've had an interesting week, a very, very interesting week on boxing. But I'm going to start it off with the comments on episode one. Basically, um, I noticed one of the comments said, Prince, why don't you fight for the British? and European title, because obviously I've got that beautiful rainbow Commonwealth belt already. So they wanted to maybe call it British Commonwealth and European, just to show people that I'm not ducking the European route. I believe I've done the European route, as well as I've tried to box with the European title. But reason that I haven't done that is I've tried to fight for the um, European before. Um, reason why that's not took place is because 10 fights ago, I won this this blue belt here, the WBF um, minor world title, I call it. Um, but basically, because I won that, the European, the EBU, even though I've won the ABU, the African Boxing Union, the EBU refused to rank me. I've had many emails, correspondences with them. They keep telling me you're, the, you're, you're a world champion. I say, no, I'm not. Um, and I've vacated the belt. Or well, you can go on their website, look at their ratings. They refuse to rank me, but... Um, yeah, I've told them many times that I don't have the belt. In fact, I won that. I actually fought for the IBO world title and I lost on points for that. So obviously, how can you be a, a champion of a belt if you've lost since then? But obviously, since the IBO loss, I've gone on to win so much more belts, as you can see. But that's the reason why I haven't fought for the EBU. And to be honest, I'm not going to keep begging them when there's other belts. For example, major world titles, 2v1. And the British title, I see that as a backward step, personally. No disrespect to the belt, it's a nice belt, but not something that I want to win, if I'm honest. I want to win um, world titles, that's my aim, that's my goal, that's the focus. It's Prince Patel, baby. Let's get on to the, uh, let's get on to the actual events this week. Um, I'm going to start with Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul. Um, there was an incident that broke out where Jake Paul took... Floyd Mayweather's hat off and uh, Floyd responded with some harsh comments towards them and an altercation Lee broke out. I think that Floyd took it a little bit too serious. Um, he didn't need to get heated like that. Obviously he felt disrespected that he took his hat. I feel he was extra disrespected because he didn't have a fresh fade or a fresh shape up um, uh, and he wasn't looking as groomed as he normally would. Um, Personally, a lot of people would say this fight's a joke to boxing, but the only people that say this fight's a joke to boxing are boxers who are struggling, boxers who don't get views, boxers who don't push and get anything. Um, them boxers are the ones that are hating this match. I think the match is great for boxing. Um, you've got Floyd Mayweather, the best to ever lace a pair of gloves. I believe no man or woman is better than Floyd Mayweather Jr., um, and to even watch Floyd fight again, to me, I love it. But um, to be honest, even if Floyd wasn't fighting Logan Paul and he was to fight anyone, anyone in the world, I would still tune in. Because when you get Floyd, you get the best that's ever lived. But a lot of people obviously are against it. I'm for it. Um, also, a lot of boxers are against Logan and Jake Paul. They, they're saying, oh, how are these two YouTubers becoming big hits in boxing? tell you exactly how they become big hits in boxing because they're not balls they're not they're not old farts who are just sitting there doing nothing these two are putting themselves out there they're bringing a massive fan base to to the game they're bringing a lot of people to, 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 to view the game a lot of people and to be honest bringing more people into the game and more interested in boxing means if you're a boxer and you believe you've got the full package you can capitalize on that um, there are many fighters out there who have told me that they, they like the fact that Jake and Logan Paul are bringing such 
big fan bases to boxing. Um, uh, but if you're a boxer and you're serious like myself, you know you can capitalise on something like that. Um, yeah, I think I think they're great for boxing. A lot of people, and it's usually the, 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 the bitter people who sit there like their careers are going nowhere and they're hating on um, Jake and Logan Paul. Also, when you get boxers who, who, who slag off Floyd Mayweather, but if you was a boxer, any this goes for any boxer alive, period. If you was offered a match against Floyd Mayweather Jr., you would be... You, 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 oh, I'm not even going to say you'd be stupid not to take it because I know for a fact people would take that. You, No one would turn down a match with Floyd Mayweather, especially with the sort of publicity and, and backing he brings. I myself, I'm like so many weights below him as well. I would definitely take a match if it was offered. It would never get offered, but um, I would definitely take it. Um, yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up on the Floyd Mayweather and Logan and Jake Paul talk. I'm all for it. I think it's a great matchup. I think it's great for the sport of boxing, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing it. Make sure you let me know in the comments section what you think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Right, let's talk about the Canelo and Billy Joe Saunders card. Start with the undercard. The co-main event I'm going to start with. There was two little guys, um, Edwin Soto against Takayama. Takayama's a former five times world minimum weight champion. And Edwin Soto is the light flyweight WBO champion. The This is the WBO European title. That goes back to when someone said, why don't I fight for a European title? I kind of have one. Um, but um, yeah, he has the world title to this. This is the WBO European one. He had the WBO world one and they fought for that. And basically, that match was interesting. A lot, a lot of volume from Taka, Takiyama. Um, not much power from him. Not much, not much power to gain respect from Soto. Soto um, was... I wouldn't say in complete control, but he was he was winning. But he was also also I believe Takayama was always in it. Um, I think it was definitely a premature stoppage. And if I'm brutally honest, that match motivated the Prince to maybe drop some girth, get rid of some girth, and you know maybe me drop down two weights to light fly and maybe fight one of them two guys because I personally believe I'd beat them both at the same time. But obviously, I am Prince Patel. I am the guru of greatness. I am the shaman of sexy. And most things come easy to me. You're watching Prince Patel TV. The next fight that I'm going to talk about is Kieran Conway against Sissoko. The only thing I'm going to really mention about the fight, because I didn't really watch it, even though I'm supposed to, because I'm supposed to do reviews. But um, if I'm honest, um, I didn't watch that fight. I only watched the last two rounds. Um, the knockdown in round nine commentary said Sissoko was in control and then round 10 I thought Sissoko won as well but um, I noticed Todd Grisham former WWE commentator um, uh, very respected commentator because I watched The Zone America because I don't really like the British commentary if I'm honest um, and basically they, Todd Grisham said if you look at this belt here the beautiful WBA Intercontinental title he described it as a minor world title, he described it as a lower world title, so um, Todd Grisham puts Prince Patel down as a minor world champion it seems. That's what I'm saying now, let's get back to the card, let's get back to the card. Um, Canelo against Billy Joe Saunders. Now there's been a lot of um, talk since the match, a lot of, um, there was a lot of talk in the build up actually. If you look at the build up, um, one of the noticeable things I remember was when they had a face off when Billy Joe was wearing a Versace robe. Now this Versace robe's quite quite famous. Everyone that seems to wear it gets beat. Conor McGregor, Masvidal, I know they're both MMA guys. And now Billy Joe Saunders, he wore it, got beat. But basically, um, he was saying to Canelo, he was saying um, Mexican beef. Now for him to say Mexican beef, I think he was implying because um, uh, Canelo had some contaminated Mexican beef before which made him test positive for a drug called clenobuterol. Um, Billy Joe isn't, I believe personally, if you if you live in a glass house, you shouldn't be throwing bricks. Um, Billy Joe himself, I believe, from what my recollection, has tested positive for 
something that was in a which he claimed was in a, a nasal spray. Um, you didn't see Canelo say an old nasal spray, nasal spray. Also, Billy Joe's friend um, Tyson Fury. I think he tested positive for something, and um, it turned out it was contamination through a wild boar. Um, uh, you don't see fighters saying to Tyson Fury, wild boar, wild boar. Um, yeah, so um, I thought that was a bit immature, but I've said a lot of stuff that's immature myself, so I can't really call anyone immature by saying that. But let's just get on to the, um, the match itself now. Let's talk about the match. Uh, Match was alright. I personally, myself, scored the first round even. Many people scored it in Billy's, Billy Joe's favour. The next couple rounds, were, in my opinion, were Canelo's. I think round six and seven, they were um, Billy Joe's rounds. Round eight, Canelo responded really well. And I believe in round eight, the end was either going to come... The end was coming near. I thought maybe round nine or ten, he would have got him out there. I believe his corner saved him from a highlight reel stoppage. Um, that takes nothing away from Billy Joe, you know. You're, it, there's, there's no shame in losing to Canelo. Um, Canelo's a once-in-a-lifetime type athlete. I believe he's um, top five of his generation, period. Um, you could argue with, uh, to say he's pound for pound number one. Um, he's beaten some amazing fighters. He's be he, he, he beat Callum Smith, who was unbeaten. He then beat a mandatory, then beat Billy Joe's unbeaten. Amazing, amazing. It just actually shows how great Floyd Mayweather Jr. is. For him to be able to beat Canelo when he did with such ease. And Canelo's a lot bigger than him. When you look at Floyd and look at Canelo, Canelo's fought as high as a light heavyweight. But, um, yeah, I, I, a little bit of controversy sparking the uh, Billy Joe-Canelo fight. Did he quit? Um... He said, um, and this is documented um, in an article, he said to Daniel DeBar, um, he would have preferred to have gone out on a shield than taken a knee. Um, I'm not saying he took a knee because he didn't, he was in his corner, but I believe if he come out of the corner, I think it was pretty obvious what was going to happen. And to be fair, I think he knew it himself and I think his corner knew it as well because he, if he has one eye and he's fighting and he can't see any southpaw, can't see from that side, Canelo's timing's really good. I don't know. Um, that fight, to me, you're fighting for the pound for pound number one spot. Legacies at stake. I've never fought anyone like these guys, so I, well, I can't comment really. But I personally would like to have gone back out. Um, but I've never, once again, I've never fought anyone as good as Canelo or even as good as Billy Joe. While I'm saying that. Um, Daniel DeBar was fighting Joe Joyce and people bring Ebony Bridges up saying, oh, her eye was swollen. Her eye wasn't fractured. Her eye was just swollen. A guy like Billy Joe who's had hundreds of fights would be able to tell the difference between swollen eye and a fractured eye, I believe. Um, and basically, them two were fighting Shannon Courtney, Cuntney, whatever her name is, and Joe Joyce. And he was fighting Canelo Alvarez, who... Come on, man, it's an amazing fight. It's a dangerous fight. And to be able to fight him with one eye, yeah. Also, to add on, at the end of the match, there was a press conference where Canelo was and uh, Andrade, um, Boo, who's known as Boo Boo, gate crashed the press conference. And I personally believe Eddie Hearn won't make that fight. Any fight with, with a guy who doesn't get them all important posse M views, who doesn't get them all important viewing figures, and viewing figures that geezers like Coogan Cassius Ram A. Nathan, like he loves basically, boo boo don't get them views. So even though I believe Canelo would beat him, that fight won't get made. Um, but I thought it was interesting the way he, he gate crashed the press conference. I quite liked it. I'm into all of that stuff. I'm into all of that. That's, that could be why I like Floyd Mayweather against Jake and Logan Paul. I'm into that stuff. But that fight will never get made. Um, I don't think... It, well, when I say never, never say never, especially in boxing. But I don't think it will get made. And I quite like the way he'd done that. quite like the way he come into press conference. Very good fighter himself. Very good fighter. Let me know what you think about episode two in the comments section. Because remember, I read them all. And uh, ask me a question. Ask me a question. And in episode three, I can give an answer. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe.
because let's face it, there's nothing to dislike here.